Welcome to ZBook Successful Authors Podcast. And with me, I have a new author of the best-selling book, Touch, A New Start Begins with an End. Welcome, Angela. How are you? Hi, I'm really well, thank you. And thank you for inviting me. Yeah, no problem. Your, your book is number one in several categories. Congratulations. Thank you. It's been really exciting to watch it go up the chart. I bet, I bet. And uh, is this your first book? Uh, yeah, it's the first in the series. Uh, I decided to um, fast release the series across the summer and early autumn. And uh, yes, yeah, so first first one. And nice. uh, it's, yeah, it's been really exciting to see it so well received. Yeah. So what, what, what got you started in, in writing? Uh, well, I started off, I'm a health practitioner, um, holistic health practitioner, physiotherapist. And uh, so I started nonfiction articles uh, for newspapers and so on. And then I merged into sort of a blend of fiction and nonfiction because I produced a series of relaxation resources. And um, so I wrote the relaxation stories, visualizations, and they were then set to soundtracks by uh, a composer. And so that started me with writing down my stories. And um, I just always wanted to write a novel. And actually what pushed me to get on with the novel and stop just juggling ideas and writing characters in a book and little scenarios and so on, uh, was that a friend of mine uh, sadly died young. And I thought, right, okay, I need to get on with this. I need to do it because we just don't know um, how much time we've got. And that got me, I started to look for a creative writing group and uh, worked through initially with them, learned some craft and uh, developed a, a nice group of uh, beta readers, very supportive group. And yeah, and on the crest of that wave, <laughs> so, uh, I wrote the book and um, initially picked up by a literary agent, which was really exciting, but you know, traditional publishing is extremely <laughs> slow. Um, and I had uh, three books written and I was still waiting um, and I decided, no, I'm going to look at self-publishing and actually because I uh, are already used to running a business, I found that self-publishing really suited me. Better. That's cool. So you, you had a chance to traditionally publish it and you opted. Yeah. Interesting. So... It was mainly yeah. because of the timeline and, or was it the creative yeah. freedom? Well, it was a little bit of both. I started getting um, a little bit worried because uh, I was getting offers to write stories on particular subjects or suggestions about maybe resetting my book somewhere different and et cetera, et cetera. And I, I thought, actually, you know what? That's not what I want to do. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't understand. I mean, I know the arguments, but why would you, you only get 10% when you go, well, yeah. on average, right? Why would yeah. you take 10% instead of 70? Why would you give somebody else your work and creative yeah. uh, authority? That's, I, yeah. I don't get it. I'm, I'm, yeah. Well, I know I everybody's you know. look. go ahead. Yeah. No, well, I think you're right because, but but actually starting out, I just had seen that route. You know, I had thought about that, you know, that was the route that you went. And um, and actually, uh, you know, I thought partway along the way, uh, do you know what, I've got a really good, I've run a business for years, why can't I run this business? And it's about learning the, the business, it's about, taking courses and and speaking to the right mentors and and mm. having the courage to go with it nice can you tell us about that business the previous 
Yeah, sure. Um, I run, oh, well, I, I'm a director of two um, health uh, clinics and I started off, I'm a physiotherapist and I'm an acupuncturist as well. So I have a foot in both camps. I have, um, I'm a traditional medicine and holistic mm -hmm. medicine and um, I love working with energy medicine and I like uh, the freedom that running my own uh, business gives me. Um, I love meeting the people as well. I've met some really fantastic people over the, the years. And uh, yeah, so that, that's my business. And I work in conjunction with um, acupuncturist, uh, nutritionalist, um, the psychotherapist, so that we, we try to offer a package of well-being for people because I... It really worries me that we concentrate really heavily sometimes on health and we ignore people's well-being. And I think it's really important to integrate the two, two things, um, particularly so much, uh, so many health issues are related to, to um, stress and to um, things that are going on elsewhere, poor nutrition, lack of exercise, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's really important to understand the person and develop a program that, that suits them and looks at their well-being as well as their health. Yeah, yeah. Hol I like a holistic approach too, but um, I wanted to actually ask you if you did marketing for your businesses. Yeah, I, I do. Um, I... I write uh, quite a lot of uh, articles in newspapers. I broadcast on the radio for, for 20 years. I was the sound advice physio on BBC for 20 mm. years. Um, I work with a website and we've done a lot of um, SEO work with that uh, search engine optimization work. We advertise as well. Um, and I've used mentors both on the, the business side and, and the marketing side for the, for the clinics. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, now you got my, now you got me curious. One more, one more tangential question, please. How, yeah, how yes. do you find a mentor and get them to mentor you? Um, well, I think um, for me, it's often at conferences, congresses, uh, and you know, online seminars and so on. So I hear people talking and uh, listen to what they've got to say. I look at the what they've done, their own businesses and so on, and uh, and then I think you get a feel, you get a feeling for people. Are they are they right for you? And then. You know, when you start to talk to them, I think you get a much um, better sense of are they the right person for but then you. Do but you I'm... just say, okay, will you be my mentor? Well, how does it work? <laughs> well, usually there's a kind of an interview process, isn't it? It's it's mm -hmm. it goes both ways. Um, mm -hmm. So usually they're offering mentoring services, um, mm -hmm. and they interview you, don't they? And I had a a real grilling interview with with my um uh, my physio clinic. Uh, mentor like he wanted the stats and he wanted to know what I was doing and he wanted to know how committed I was how you know whether I was going for it or not and um and yeah I thought oh I don't know if he's gonna want me um but you know and there was there was quite a lot of work to do pre that first call um and yeah and and then we decided we were a, we were a good good fit I've lived in Australia for a while so I was quite used to his approach and uh, that straight up approach that they often have the Aussies and um yeah so that was a good fit and I, cool. I but I think that's how you do it I think it's about relationships because I think somebody can be a great mentor but not necessarily the right mentor for you at the stage you're at or you know where you want to go exactly so it's it's got to be a very personal thing I think mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Back to your book. So, so tell us about your book, fine. <laughs> yeah. So it's a uh, the series. It's a women's fiction series, and it's about uh, resilience and I guess uh, redemption because the story starts with um, my uh, main character is a physiotherapist, and it starts with her with a great life. Um, 
she's doing a postgraduate course. She's very well qualified. She sees a future. She's met her soulmate. They know what they're doing. And then he dies in an accident. And so that's her life. I, I uh, said in an elevator pitch once yeah. that she was left standing in the crater after a blast. Mm. And um, so then the story is about her and where she goes, what she does, who she meets. And along the way, there are people who help her. There's found family. We look at the bereavement process, the, the trauma process and how people recover and indeed how they don't recover. And I'm very interested as well in her professional self and how she helps people and what she does and then what's going on in her personal self and how those two don't always tie up. Um, and it takes her through a journey of recovery um, and we end up with um, a happy for now ending and the series continues with her life with her group of friends we look at the area where she lives we look at what happens to her through her life so it goes on on through into her developing and her business uh, her developing a personal life looking at whether she's going to have a family or not and the issues that that's going to cause for her as a working mum, etc. So that's the basis for the story. Mm. And um, are you working on the next book already? I am. I'm writing book four. Um, in between book three and book four, I've written an historical fiction novel. Um, and I went back to 1910, 1912. Um, my grandmother was born in 1896. And, um, yeah, we had our kids late in my family. <laughs> we kind of quite a staggered generation. And I had some of her archive photos. And obviously, I spoke to her a lot. She talked about her young her life. Um, and it's not based on her life at all. But I've used some of her archive material. I've looked at that period, which was just fascinating. It, it was... Um, 1911, there was a coronation going on with pre-First World War, got suffragists and suffragettes going on. Um, so that's that was a really exciting story to to write. So and it took me into a, a different genre. I thoroughly enjoyed the research to that. And then I've come back to Ellie Rose because, you know, I, I love this group of people. I like where they're going. The area uh, that it's written in is changing significantly. The agriculture is changing because of climate change and it's starting to be a wine growing area. So, um, and actually, um, coincidentally, I was very involved when I lived in France with a group of friends who were all wine producers and wine growers. So I'm really interested to see that follow me here. And uh, I'm going to write a little bit about that in this story as well. Wow. So I, oh, yeah, go ahead. No, I, I, I really like to incorporate as well, you know, big, big issues about life, you know, so I've, um, I've looked in one of the books at pregnancy and infertility and so on. I've looked at post-traumatic stress. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to look here at, at families and, and how integrating a family impacts on groups of friends and on, on the lives of the people and so on. So I like to look at those issues along the way. Yeah, that's interesting. I suppose you have to do a lot of research. Where is this area where there's the wine growing now? Uh, in the in the east of England, in Essex, mm -hmm. um, uh, I find myself now living in the um, premier postcode sort of uh, zip code area for wine growing in the UK now. Wow. So, and, it, you know, when I moved here, uh, you know, 30 odd years ago, there wasn't a, uh, you know, there, there wasn't a vineyard in sight or maybe there was one small vineyard. Mm. But um, it's now right the way along the estuary where I live. Yeah, wow, very much cool. changed the look of the land. Yeah. 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 So, well, kind of, um, there's a lot of different things there. That was my next question was, you know, what do you do about writer's block? Uh, right. Well, 
Um, I think it's really important uh, to preempt it if you possibly can. So I, I work on mindset a lot, on positive mindset, um, a, on my own creative flow. So I, I don't just write my novels and so on. I actually do continue to do writing exercises. I do use breathing and meditation, which, you know, from what I was saying earlier about relaxation and so on, you'd sort of expect. And I do use it and I find it really, really helpful. But um, I warm up as well. So I don't sit down and just start writing my novel. So I spend at least 10 minutes, quarter of an hour doing some little writing exercises, getting the juices flowing, even if it's just journaling for a little while. Um, and I think if you keep that stuff going, <clears throat> then you you can you can write more easily. Your your flow's there, and I think you have to compare it to sports people. You know, if they don't go out and just try and produce a great performance, they train for it, they warm up, they go and do it, and they work on their psychology. And I think as writers, we perhaps ignore that a little bit to our to our detriment really. Um, and I think it's also about uh, coming to terms with the fact that not everybody's gonna like what you write um, and not everybody's your audience and it's absolutely fine for them to have that opinion or to not want to read your books, including friends and family and so on. They're not all gonna like what you write or support you in your writing journey. And I think you have to come to terms with the fact and be okay with that. I think you also have to get to be okay with criticism and take on board what's useful from that, but not let it crush you. Um, and I, I think that's one of the biggest things I've learned about writing is being open to critique, but actually in your core, in your center, having confidence to sift through that and and you know take what's useful to you not be crushed down by what isn't useful to you yeah that's uh, always a sobering experience your first reviews and there's always some trolls in there that you know yep. that, that will yeah, review something that has nothing to do with the book you know yeah absolutely it uh, it it can be disheartening i I think even uh, one of my first professional edits, it was just really badly delivered. Not, not that the editing was bad, but the way it was delivered, the way the critique was delivered was just heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just thought, wow, <coughs> they really don't like this. And blah, blah, blah. anyway, thank heavens for my writing group because I took it there and said, well, I'm just... I don't know what to do I'm just crushed here and you know they said well come on have a look at this what's good in it what's valuable out of it and actually the rest of it and some of this is his problem because he doesn't know how to deliver a critique and you don't need to take that on board yeah, so yeah. yeah it's so you know I, th I think you know you have to have that core of self-belief mm. yeah cool Right on. Yeah, that, uh, I've gotten uh, plenty of reviews, too. I can tell you all about it. But do you yeah. have a favorite author? Uh, yeah, I, um, I look, I really love Joanne Harris, who wrote the Chocolat series, the, the film uh, that was made into the, the film. Um, her writing is really evocative and I love the way she manages to get a sprinkle of magic in there uh, as well and um, it's her descriptive writing is fabulous uh, like I can pick those books up and she takes me back to France I'm I'm there in a kind of a really visceral way so I love her writing um, on the indie author front, I've read virtually um, everything that Julia Blake has written. She's a multi-genre author and they're fabulous uh, books. I really admire her, her writing as well. 
And then there's a little favourite on the spiritual front. Um, I, I like Khalil Gibran's writing, and I think The Prophet is always um, something inspirational. And it's one of those interesting little books, and uh, I've lent it I don't know how many times. It's never, ever come back. And I've gone and bought it again and lent it again. So that one's one of my favorites that I go back to as well. Yeah, I have to read that. I, I, I've i only heard good things about it and I still haven't read it. So I got to get that one too. Yeah, it's it's beautifully, it's really beautifully written. Yeah. Um, I want to get back to your book just a little bit. Tell us about your main character a little. What inspired you to her? Yeah. Well, I really, um, I wanted to talk a bit about um, physiotherapy because we've got um, a shed load of, of doctors and nurses and psychologists in fiction, not too many physios. And uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that. I wanted to talk about this issue of, uh, of well-being and, um, and I know, and physiotherapists we spend a lot of time with our with our people you know like my appointments are 45 minutes long so you get really to talking to people so um you know along along the way over the time I've been working I've met some amazing people now nobody in the book is anybody in particular but I had a real a uh, host of stories that I just wanted to tell. I, I think little cameo stories as well that I, I wanted to tell. So I wanted it set in in that. Um, I, w I wanted it set in that milieu really, um, and um, yeah, that that was it. Really, that was it. Really, I wanted to tell some of these stories uh, that uh, I've lived over the years. Yeah. And um, where did you learn to write? Or do you use any templates or, or benchmarks or something? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I, I learned to write at the, the, the Writers' Company, which is a, um, a, a writing, a creative writing school uh, locally. So I learned some craft there. I'm an absolute avid uh, reader. Mm. Um, but so I... I really like the hero's journey form that sort of speaks mm -hmm. to me where the person starts out, they encounter a difficulty, they move along their journey, meeting people along their way, some of whom are going to help them, some of them are not. In fact, some of them are going to mislead them. They come to a point of reflection where they have to take action and then we come down to the consequences of the of that action mm. and we see where it's moved them to and you know where they where they end up um and along the way there'll be all sorts of little subplots that come in mm -hmm. that, that deter them or or inspire them or distract them or whatever it is so i i like that arc that for mm. me that that sits comfortably and i like to base my book around that sort of journey yeah, thing yeah the hero's journey character. is pretty uh, archetypal huh and um isn't there yeah. like um isn't there there's several phases isn't there a magic elixir at some point or some kind of magic yeah there's there are different sort of i, I think there are di there are different ways that it's uh, that it's described but there's an inner cave point where the person kind of goes inside and you know they really reflect on on, on their crisis or on their what's happened to them and what are they going to do about it and how are they going to how are they going to move uh, forward so yeah there's a reflective very there's a period where it's really reflective and then they then they move out um, but I like this notion as well of uh, mischievous people along the way so that not everybody's not everybody's exactly what they seem to be and so on because that's real life too mm -hmm. isn't it yeah, yeah. And what, what's your main character's name? Ellie? Ellie Rose. Ellie Rose. Okay. Well, I don't want to give away too much of your novel and, and your books, but what is her uh, her basic character arc over the entire series? What's she going to do in the next book? Can you tell us? Uh, yeah. I mean, in the next book, um, basically, 
it's going to come back and bite her on the bum that she's chosen to get through this by throwing herself into work and isolating herself a bit from people and getting really involved with her, her dogs and whatever. And it's going to come back and bite her on the bum that she hasn't really done the work to resolve her own trauma and grief. Hmm. And she's going to go off at a bit of a tangent. She's going to scare everybody in her entourage. And, uh, and actually, she's going to kind of run away a little bit. And, uh, and then she's going to look at how she's going to resolve this issue personally, because she's resolved it professionally hmm. and kind of thinks she's done the job in book one. And, you know, we see her move forward. And then in book two, we find, ah, <laughs> there's more work to be done. So, yeah. yeah, so that takes her through. And then, you know, we're going to see her go through. I, I don't know how many I'm going to write. Originally, it was going to be three. But actually, her story's not finished and I'm not done with these characters. There's more I want to write. And I'm not done with what's happening in the area here as well. And, you know, the evolution of this area. So, um yeah, there's more to do. Yeah, that's that's cool. Now I'm going to leave it at that. They'll just the readers and listeners will just have to buy your book. <laughs> and, uh, Thank you. Yes, yeah. please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we have a little time for a couple more questions. My favorite questions is actually if you could eat um, dinner with anybody, past, present, or future, alive or dead, who would it be? Yeah. There are some really fascinating people that would be cool to meet and you kind of mind goes to celebrities and things, first of all. But do you know what? I'd like to have dinner with my dad. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I, I would like to have dinner with my grandfather that I never met. But uh, yeah. So and yeah. your dad, is he still alive? No. No, my dad died uh, ooh, 27 years ago, and um, I know exactly what he would order off the menu <laughs> because he just loved to find a restaurant that did white bait, which are little tiny fish that, that are um, crispy fried. Uh, for starter, he'd have trout manure for his main course, and then he'd have some kind of pudding with custard because um, he loved custard and mum used to begrudge making him custard because she wasn't that keen on it. So he really <laughs> loved nursery puddings with custard, you know. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I know exactly what he'd eat. And um, what, yeah, what is he trout would... menu? I don't, I trout don't know. Trout menu, that. it's a trout cooked in, in um, kind of a... a a butter sauce mm. and cream sauce so it's a whole trout um mm. with almonds and in a sort of a butter sauce so um he he really liked that that was one of his favorites yeah man i would i would just love to do that or have a time machine oh boy that that's yeah. a good one I mean, there are, there are some, uh, look, you know, doing the the history research for my book, I, I'm i using um, a main character who was a suffragette who's real and I'm using some of her history and wow, she was an amazing woman as well and did so much. She was a music hall singer, but she was an activist and she remained an activist all through her life. And um, she was in prison and force fed upwards of 200 times in pursuit of her goals. She was a really, you know, a real character. So, yeah, I mean, she'd be somebody I'd, I'd like to see. But I just couldn't turn up the opportunity to have dinner with my dad once more. Yeah. Yeah. So where can we reach you and your book? Uh Right, well, uh, my, my uh, books are all on Amazon. And so uh, if you look me up at Angela Cairns, all my books are on Amazon. And we have Touch, Dilemma and Bloom. And there's a prequel nov uh, novella called Paradise, which you can get for free if you'd like to by going onto my website, which is www.angelacairnsauthor.co.uk. 
sign up to my newsletter and you'll get the prequel novella for free. And because I'm on talking to you today, I've set touch at 99 cents or 99p for the uh, five days over the weekend and up to Tuesday. Um, so if people would like to read Touch, then go and uh, grab it for the bargain price of 90 the ebook. All the right. So oh, you've got a you've got a blitz sale on this weekend, 99 cents for yeah, awesome for the, the ebook. Um, yeah, and I just had some ex really exciting news today. I've just signed off on the audio book for Touch, which will be coming out in about 10 days. I think it takes ACX about 10 days to get it up, but that was really exciting to sign off on that project. Awesome. Oh, wow. You just started another topic. We're going to have to do another podcast about the audio book <laughs> then. Yeah, yeah, that's a Love that's it. a topic in itself. That's There's a lot oh, of yeah. work too. Did you, yeah. did you uh, narrate it or did you get a narrator? No, I got a narrator for this mm -hmm. one because Touch has quite a few different accents in it. And I mm -hmm. didn't feel comfortable to do the accent. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm going to have a, a go at narrating my short stories. Um, I've got an anthology of short stories out and uh, I'm going to have a go at narrating them because I'm quite comfortable narrating. But listening to audiobooks, doing a bit of research uh, around it, uh, audiobooks have evolved and they're, they're pretty much, you know, plays now. They're not, you know, even some are multicast members. So I thought just reading it maybe wouldn't be good enough. So I decided mm. on a narrator. Yeah. That's great. That's great. And all right. So the, the novel is Touch. A new start begins with an end. Going on sale. 99 cents this weekend. And you can get the free book. Angela Cairns, author .co uk. That's awesome. Well, yeah. thanks for being here, Angela. I've really enjoyed chatting to you. Thank you for having me. Yes, and I uh, I enjoy uh, seeing your book at the top. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll catch you next time. Okay. Good to see you. Bye now. Okay.